everybody, it's Magus. Thanks for coming back for our August 2023 monthly update of our Tesla solar panels and power walls system. A quiet month here is a good month, right? It's been quiet for our system, but a big month for the channel. We just hit a thousand subscribers a couple days ago, and I just wanted to say thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I want to keep on making videos for you. I hope you keep on wanting to watch them, and I can't wait to keep on making more. So with it being a quiet month here, we're going to take advantage of that, and I'm going to go over some of the new Powerwall 3 install details and specs, and I'm also going to take a look at the virtual power plant season for 2023 here, the couple events that we had here in August. I'm going to go over those shortly here. Stay tuned. A little over three weeks ago, Tesla started installing the new Powerwall 3 units in Southern California. Now back then we only had a picture from the user online after they were installed on the side of his house, but now Tesla's released official specs and photos, and it's quite the upgrade. Now before we get into those, I'm just going to say, it's going to have a different form factor. You're used to the Powerwall Pluses and the Powerwall 2s. Basically, this is your inverter and this is your battery. In the new Powerwall 3 units, they're designed for ease of installation and it's all in one. So it's just gonna be this battery form factor with the inverter already built in. Now that's uh, still gonna be quite the big package. It's 43 by 24 by eight inches and it's 130 kilos. That's 287 pounds. So they are quite heavy. Now what the uh, other upgrades that you get with these new Powerwall 3 units is that you get six input strings instead of four. What that means is if you have a roof that has a lot of different roof faces, you can actually have two more strings of panels allowing you to get much more input from your system. That's pretty awesome. Now, what's the difference between the capacity on a Powerwall 2 or a Powerwall Plus unit and a Powerwall 3? There isn't one. They're all 13 and a half kilowatt hours. Each Powerwall unit is gonna be 13 and a half kilowatt hours. That has not changed from the Powerwall 2s or pluses to the Powerwall 3. Now what has changed and what's such a drastic upgrade is the output from them. As you have seen maybe in my video from before, my system can output about 20 kilowatt, but these new units can output 11 and a half kilowatt continuously each. So if I had the same three power walls that were power wall threes instead of 20 kilowatt output, it would continuously output 34 and a half kilowatt. That's more than a 50% upgrade and that's awesome. These power wall three units really are quite the upgrade. Now you might have seen my video a couple weeks ago when the Powerwall 3s were starting to be installed where I did the load test. If you want to check that out, check the link up here. But basically in that we had some questions. Would Powerwall 3s play nice with other Powerwalls? And how many can you put into a system? Well we have some official answers from uh, Tesla now. And basically, will Powerwall 3s play nice with a system like ours? The answer is no. Unfortunately, Tesla has said that Powerwall 3s are only compatible with other Powerwall 3 systems. They do not work with systems that have an inverter already or have Powerwall 2 or pluses because they already have inverters. Basically, if you were waiting to expand your Powerwall 2 or plus system here, you're going to have to expand it with more Powerwall 2 units, not Powerwall 3s, unfortunately. The other question we had, and I'm still not completely sure if somebody understands this differently or is better information than I, from the website, it looks like it says it's scalable up to three power walls per unit. I'm not sure what a unit is, if that's per upgrade or house, but it looks like we can do three power wall threes per install, which would be 40 and a half kilowatt hours of storage like we have here, which with much better output. Hopefully we'll get some clarification on that in the future. Now, if anybody has any questions or anything they'd like me to kind of look into or see if we can get answers on, please let me know in the comments down below. As summer's winding down, I think it's a good time to take a look at the virtual power plant events for the 2023 season. Now in August, we had three more events. They were three hours, five hours, and three hours long. Now, including July, we're at 16 hours of events. And one important thing to note is if you look at the website, they guarantee PG&E and Tesla a minimum of 20 hours of events. So it looks like we're just scraping by at the bare minimum this summer and using the virtual power plants. 
I'm kind of disappointed by that. I was really hoping we were going to use them a little bit more at the beginning of the summer or July when we started having those one hour events. Basically, I thought that might be the new norm, uh, you know, basically discharge a third of your battery and then continue on the rest of the night using your power walls, staying off the grid and everybody wins. We make a little money. Unfortunately, it seems like that didn't really happen. We didn't have a super hot summer here. It was still pretty warm, but we just didn't have that many events. They also tended to prefer these longer three or five hour events. Now, the five hour event, I think might be a requirement. I remember being on Ohm Connect and they had to have these five hour events quarterly. And so you'd get occasionally a really long one. I think that's why we had the five hour event. Now, what's also interesting about these uh, new virtual power plant events is that the discharge behavior has changed somewhat. Now, when we first started doing virtual power plant events, basically these things would just empty themselves out as quickly as possible, just putting out their max rate until they were empty. They'd usually be empty about 30 minutes or 45 minutes before the end of an event. But now with the new discharge behavior, they're actually balancing themselves out so that they output the whole entire event. And so that means if your draw increases, they're going to decrease what they send back to the grid so that they last the whole time. Or if it's the opposite and your draw um, decreases, they're going to output more just so that you end up sending back, you know, basically all the way to the end of the event. I'd have to imagine that that's probably better for the power companies. It's easier, you know, to keep track of with one even long output instead of a short, you know, big burst and then it tapers off as the batteries runs out. I guess we'll see. Now, one fun thing to note is when Tesla updated their app here, They've put some new screens onto the virtual power, uh, power plant screens here, and one of them actually says 60 hours of events. I don't know if that's maybe the program for next year or if that's kind of a remnant from something else but somebody just didn't proofread, but hopefully we'll utilize this program more in the future. That would be three times the amount of hours that we've used here so far. Now, I imagine we're just going to have a couple short events here as falls uh, you know, coming through and that's gonna end the virtual power plant season here. It's been a good one so far. So actually I have the numbers here. It's 99.7 kilowatt hours discharge in the month of August. So that at $2 per kilowatt hour is $200 for those events in August, including July, that's 163.2 kilowatt hours for a total compensation of about $325 into our pockets. Again, we made a little over $570 last year. So this is, you know, a little bit under half of that. Still quite lucrative, but just not as much. So here comes the fun part, all the data. Now in July, we used 1,965.1 kilowatt hours. Uh, in August, that was up to 2,060.5 kilowatt hours. That's 63 kilowatt hours on average in July, and that's up to about 66 kilowatt hours in August. Basically, August is hot. Our AC is just running the most. It's gonna run all year, and that's just gonna bump that up a little bit more. Now with fall coming here, hopefully we're gonna get into that sweet spot where the AC usage starts going down for us. Um, in addition to it just being hot in general, our cars, the Teslas have cabin overheat protection, so they're tending to just use more battery during the day. Um, so we're charging them at home a lot more too. Now you're gonna see a lot more gray on the graph here. I've kind of changed my perspective on things here. If we have to charge the cars or we're doing something that requires a lot of electricity, basically what I'm gonna do is use our power walls to keep us off the grid during peak hours and then I'm gonna just switch it over to the grid leave whatever we have left in the batteries, and then we'll just use the grid. So you're gonna see a bit more gray on the graphs here. This just keeps things easy for me, and uh, we have so much in excess credits at this point that you know we're just paying the non-bypassable charges, which I don't like to pay, but in this case, I'd rather have backup available and charge the cars and then be ready to go the next morning. Um, now, between the Model Y and the Model 3 this month, we are using more, like I said, with the cabin uh, overheat protection we're up to about 550 kilowatt hours of usage between the two vehicles here that is still about a quarter of the usage there you know keeping the same amount as last month now last year in August we used a bunch less 1320.6 kilowatt hours about 750 kilowatt hours less than this year and you're like 
Why so much less? This one's really easy to explain. We spent the first two weeks of August last year on vacation, so we weren't home. The AC in the house was set to 80, and uh, basically that's going to make the huge, huge difference here. Uh, the rest of the month, you can see it bumped up a little bit more when we were back here, but that's going to make that 50% increase in usage happen there. Now next up, we'll take a look at solar production. In July, that was 2,212.5 kilowatt hours. That's down to 1,878.7 kilowatt hours in August of this year. In July, that's averaging about 71 kilowatt hours, and you can see the drastic reduction already down to about 60 kilowatt hours on average in August. The days are gonna get shorter, and this production drop is just gonna continue to increase. Hopefully for you, that coincides with the AC de you know, use decreasing and that you're not going to use as much in the house. That's what's starting to happen for us here a little bit, but September and October still can occasionally be a little bit hot. You can see in August, we did have a couple cloudy days, um, you know, which caused a decrease in production in July there. It was really a rare month because there wasn't really anything going on. It was a, per a, you know, a perfect production month and that's pretty hard to come by. Now, last year in August, we produced 1,851.7 kilowatt hours. Comparing that with 1,878.7 kilowatt hours this month, this is actually the first time year to year that we're increasing from month to month, you know, in, or sorry, from year to year uh, over a month. So we haven't done that before. Usually we've seen little kind of, you know, two to 5% decreases or a little bit more if there was more weather. This is the first time we've actually seen 27 kilowatt hours more in 2023 than 2022. Also, if you see here, I'm kind of letting the, the new grass are growing on me a little bit. I can see the vehicle data here and it's starting to fill in here and be a little bit more useful. So maybe it's growing on me a little bit. I didn't like it at first, but Hopefully it'll start to become much more useful here. Next up, we'll take a look at the power walls here. There's 873 kilowatt hours discharged from the power walls in July, and that's down to 785.5 kilowatt hours discharged in August. In July, that's an uh, average of 28 kilowatt hours, or about 70% of the power walls capacity. In August, down to about 25 kilowatt hours. So we're still waking up with a good, you know, a good bit in the power walls here. We're not touching the grid on most nights unless we're charging, and really these are probably the hottest nights of the year so I don't anticipate using our power walls much more than this. Now last year in August we discharged 674.2 kilowatt hours from the uh, power walls but quite simply I think this is just that two-week vacation at the beginning of August last year. We just weren't using the AC for the first two weeks of that month so it's going to be lower compared to this year. Now again we didn't have any power outages this month. Way to go PG&E. I don't think we've had a you know unplanned power outage since April, which is pretty good. I mean, we had a bunch in the beginning of the year, and then it's just kind of it's been really good here. So, congrats PG&E. Let's keep it going here. Now, last up, we have the net grid use numbers for the month. In July, we sent back net 132.1 kilowatt hours. In August, we have a first for a summer month here. We net drew. 303.3 kilowatt hours from the grid. It's the first here. We're actually using more from the grid than we sent back. You remember when I said that production is you know dropping pretty quickly here? Well, the heat is also staying up where it was. So as production's dropping, unfortunately, we're still using the same amount of electricity. Now we're still charging the cars quite, you know, quite a bit too here. So we're just at that sweet spot. Unfortunately, you know, in springtime where we tend to send back a lot where we're not running AC and the temperatures are nice. Well, now the temperatures are not so nice and we're having to run the AC when the, um, basically the production is very low. So this still doesn't make a difference though, this huge 303 kilowatt hour, you know, positive instead of a negative. We're still so far ahead in those net energy metering credits that this does not make a difference. Now, if you compare this month, you know, at 300 positive compared to last year's month at negative 442.6 kilowatt hours, that's quite the difference. 
Last year, we really only used the grid after those virtual power plant events. You know, this year, I tended to stack our days where we had the heavier use. Like I said, I wanted to make it easy for us. So I, if we had a day where I was going to charge the car or I needed to do, you know, a ton of laundry or something, basically, I would stack all that use and just use the grid a bit more. When it was convenient, I tried to use the grid. Unfortunately, we, you know, use it a bit more than we want to, but it's there. We have all the excess credit. So I'm going to use it. It's just going to be a little bit less of a check at the end of the year. Now looking at those grid use numbers, these self-powered numbers are going to be way off this month compared to what you're used to seeing. This month we were 74% self-powered. That's 40% from solar, which is down from 49% last month. That's 34% from the power walls, which is down from 43% last month. And grid was up to 26% in August. And that's up from the 8% that we used in July. I like to be self-powered, but here it was convenient. It was easy to use the grid and we're going to use those credits when we have them. Now, I hope you enjoyed this month's video here. As always, if you want to uh, join the sustainable energy revolution here with Tesla, use my referral link. If you're getting panels or you're getting the solar roof tiles installed, that'll save you $500 off the order. Basically, you're going to have a $100 refundable deposit down until you accept the design that's completely refundable. Once you accept the design, they install everything and you only have that $100 in the system until your system is uh, turned on and passes city inspection. So definitely well worth it. Have Tesla come out, use that referral link, save 500 bucks and get yourself saving money on your electricity bill. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed the video for the month. We'll see you next month. Enjoy.